Okay, welcome back everyone to the final video of the Deep Elf Fire Elementalist tutorial. Uh, so the last video we got, uh, we went to Zot 5, we saw it, we talked about it a lot. Um, and then I got mutated quite badly actually. Uh, it's not so bad that I would not be able to win the game without getting rid of them, but it's bad enough that I'm willing to go into Elf and try to find a mutation potion or two, get rid of some of this, uh, uh, these bad mutes. Particularly the, uh, potions of port restoring my health means that I'll be having, having to chug my six potions of heal wounds left. You know, that's gonna suck. Um, the spell's a little easier to cast, a little less powerful, make it so that we are more likely to get messed up because, you know, our spells do less damage, so enemies that are dangerous can spend more time in line of sight. It's just a, it's a bad idea to, uh, it, sorry, if I have infinite time, I would extend this game just to uh, get a mutation potion or two. I said before uh, in the last video that Elf is a fairly viable alternative here um, for the for the first time mage. So I'm, I'm just going to go in here, just see what's going on, you know. Uh, hopefully get a mutation potion or two, maybe get a haste potion. There, I already got a heal wounds potion, not bad. So you can just come in here, get a couple of resists and leave. Uh, you can also clear down to L3, that's perfectly viable as well. Uh, I'll talk briefly about that because there's a good chance that people who do watch this tutorial and do try to emulate me, even if I didn't do Elf, they probably try to do Elf anyway, just because, um, I don't know, people are like that. They feel like Elf is necessary. The reality is, again, that this game is still winnable. I don't have to go to Elf at all. I'm just going to Elf for completeness sake and also to uh, fill up the, this next video, which is going to just be the orb run otherwise, uh, and like a very brief period of, um, like a, ver a very brief period of the Zot 5 area that we've pretty much mostly cleared already anyway. Uh, same strategy, per the usual, kill stuff at full screen. Orbit Destruction is a lot less good here. Um, firstly, because there are so many stupid weird walls in Elf, uh, like that uh, green pillar there, that might block an Orbit Destruction or two. Um, and secondly, because these enemies aren't usually elemental resistant, meaning that we can just hit them with poison arrows and bolts of fire and whatnot. Um, and also, we just generally want to be pretty quiet uh, with the way we deal with Elf. We want to kind of slowly uh, explore around, hit them with full screen stuff, don't really overextend yourself. That's, that's pretty much the best way to do it, I'd say. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a good um, irresistible spell here, and that does def that definitely does show when we try to fight enemies like this. I guess I can use this falchion to fight the other falchion, but I don't know. It's not great. It wasn't a great idea. Yeah, uh, so an, a spell like Iron Shot there would be really effective. I could have used Orbit Destruction, but I felt like the noise and the fact that it was in melee with me already probably made it not worth it quite as much. But you know, maybe I should just use it. There you go. Orbit Destruction is much better. Never mind. So you should definitely experiment with your spell slots. Just figure out what's good in what situation. Uh, no real scenario ever is like a one-off thing unless it's a unique enemy. So you can afford to do a bit of experimentation. See, as long as you're safe with stuff, you can really mess around with the game as much as you want. As long as you, like I said, are aware that if there's something bad going on, you need to be able to respond to it really easily. So like, if my Orbit Destructions didn't do well against the Dancing Weapon, I'd immediately switch back to using Poison Arrow after a couple of casts. Um, just because it'd be too dangerous otherwise. Alright. Extra Wands of Digging. Charge, uh, extra Digging Wand Charges, that's really nice. Again, um, these the Wand of Digging is very useful both for the uh, early bits of Zot, which we've already done, and also the Orb Run, which is very helpful because we can just kind of bypass our way through a lot of the dungeon uh, by kind of going down. <coughs> Sorry, by clearing a path to the nearest upstairs. Very helpful. Anyway, uh, now we're on L3. Uh, L3 always has a big vault um, with a bunch of high level elves in it. Uh, that vault is over there actually. So we're just going to go ahead and deal with everything over here first. We want to ideally uh, treat it a bit like Zot 5 almost. Um, just clear the areas that are Particularly, oh, that elf has some designs of his own, I guess. We can use Disintegration to kill him. Zero mana tactics. Which which we talked about, like, in Lair, I guess. But as you can see, all the strategies from before still still apply now. Uh, but what was I talking about? 
Yeah, so L3 generally you want to um, clear outside of that big vault and then finally uh, slowly explore the main L3 area. Uh, it's really... Actually, I think the most similar thing it is uh, the L3 vault has, the most similar area it has is probably the Snake 4. Um, most of the vaults where you just have like a bunch of high level Nagas sitting in like one big area and you just kind of have to pull them out one by one. That's that's the same same idea really. Uh, actually we already have fire resistance, that's quite nice. We don't have to worry about getting a second one, do we? I mean it's always nice to have a second. Mm, actually no, nah, I think I'm gonna leave this ring of protection. There's a bunch of healing and stuff we can pick up as well, and a potion of experience, which is not really that good anymore. Uh, but the healing and cure wounds and res resistance potions will be very helpful for our gold. I'd rather just save the gold for now, not worry about the uh, ring of fire resistance, which we can probably just find another one if we need it. Shimmering Vorax of electric uh, electricity. It's pretty good. Or electrocution. Okay, again, I'm keeping in mind that the north is the dangerous area. Uh, it's really hard. This specific L3 is very hard to miss in terms of like, oh, I accidentally walked into it. Uh, because it's very easily defined by the, these tiles, these uh, stone tiles. So um, I'm not too scared about exploring up to the north, but once we get around this area, I kind of want to back off and just be careful. Again, it's all about <clears throat> being patient, uh, being kind of careful with how you explore L3. Never really underestimate it. I've always called L3, um, even in my first couple of videos, the great equalizer of Dungeon Crawl Stone Suit. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't matter how strong your character is or how weak it is, um, L3 always represents a risk because it's very similar to Zot in that um, enemies there just often don't give a crap about how strong you are, how weak you are. Things like Torment, things like getting hit by Crystal Spears, like your character, whether you're a mage or whether you're a melee or whether you're whatever, um, if you get tormented, you get hellfire, and you get uh, like hit with a high level conjuration, and or you get a bist. It's gonna suck regardless of whether or not you're like strong or weak. Obviously, enemy, uh, characters like myself can mitigate that risk by using my range, but uh, the reality is, when I, when I when I said the great equalizer, I more meant just in a specific subset of uh, character, which is. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, okay, let me, let me, short, short story time. I was actually going to record this about four hours earlier, but then we had this, I had this stupid bug where you press, uh, you see the bottom, like, like, task toolbar, whatever the hell it's called, the taskbar. Um, you press F11 and it's just there. I was like, ah, I need to leave right now, I guess. So, screw it, I'm just leaving. So I'm really distracted because I had all the thoughts in my head and then I kind of, like, came back to it and I'm like, what, what was I doing again? I forgot. Uh, anyway, let's look at our skills for a bit because we haven't really talked about it much. Fighting is the most important thing right now. We need more health. We need more health. We have 165 health as a mage. That's quite bad, actually. Uh, so bad that I'm going to probably turn Conjurations off for now. Just train fighting forever. We have a good amount of armor. 32 AC is pretty ridiculous for a mage. Again, this is really, really uh, telling of the difference between like, um, like a traditional caster and the way caster should actually be played. A traditional caster would be playing in robes and having like Garbo uh, defense with high dodge. I'd much rather prefer to have the Swamp Dragon scales, particularly on the deep health. That high AC is really going to mitigate a lot of damage that we would ordinarily take. Shield of Protection is great. Scarf of Resistance is covering a lot of our resist slots. Like it's just a we got a really good set of armor this uh, this time around. We're very lucky in that regard. But uh, as you can see, our AC is actually higher than our Evade and higher than our Shield. Um, not quite combined, but very close. And this is only with 7 strength, so high AC mages are actually very good. Uh, do not underestimate them. So I have been training armor up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and train a bit more dodging, um, just to bump us up a little bit more. Plus 2 on the dodging is a pretty efficient uh, way of using our mana. I can also put a little bit more into spell casting, but I think at this point we have 43 uh, mana. It's probably enough. It's not necessary to go any further than that. Besides, uh, there's not much EXP left in the game anyway, so this is a very small optimization. Alright, so, L3, uh, we're in the big castle now. Again, we're gonna, we're gonna start playing a little slow, because uh, we don't have to play on autopilot anymore. 
the area is fairly dangerous, there's a good chance that we get uh, killed by something random. So I'd rather just try to play it as slow as I can. Alright. I was wondering what that thing, what that elf was holding. It was a scroll of holy word. It was very interesting. Okay, I'm going to use orb destruction here. Mostly because if I miss, I can still kind of hit the uh, mace, which is pretty nice. Ah, that's what he was holding. A cursed glowing hand axe. Like, his line for, uh, like, the line in his, referring to him in the log, was, like, really long for some reason. Ouch. So that's an example of, um, a great equalizer. The deep elf sorcerer just hits me with a bolt of hellfire, and I just take a good chunk of my health. I think, like, 30 damage almost. Um, these elementalists are really painful. They draw away, um, walls, meaning you can't kill hull. Mostly affecting mage, uh, melee rather than mage, but yeah, it's still annoying. Uh, this is the Deep Elf Death Mage. He creates lost souls that resurrect him or something that dies on the screen. It's pretty frustrating when you come to that situation where, you know, you see your mana go down and then you kill him and then he comes back to life and you're like, ah, oh, well, you can't do anything to me, but you're annoying. This is the Deep Elf Demonologist. He's got a green ring around him, meaning he's a summoner. He can actually abyss you. Not us, because we have max MR, but he can abyss you, and he can also summon the Ice Fiend, Brimstone Fiends, etc. It's just, it's quite an annoyance. Again, as a melee character, you'd have a lot of difficulty dealing with all these guys at once, unless you were playing very carefully, like uh, like an actual good player, but I don't expect people who are going for their first-ish win to really understand, like, to be that rigorous in the, you know, back and forth, like, lure back, kill stuff, come back to fight again at full health, etc. They're, they're not as patient, I guess. So I would avoid doing elf. Just because if you get in a bad situation, you're, you're probably gonna just going to die. And you don't have to. Uh, the Deep Elf Annihilator can crystal speed you, can also iron shot you, can also poison arrow you. Quite a dangerous enemy, but uh, for some reason his accuracy is quite poor and he just doesn't really hit you ever. Uh, if he does hit you, though, enjoy taking like 45 to 100 damage, depending on how he feels that day. Again, sticking to our roots. Max screen, uh, engaging. Poison arrow is our friend here. It uh, pierces straight through the elf. Fairly accurate. Um, fairly accurate. Does a lot of poison damage to the enemies that aren't our poison, which is all the elves. Uh, full screen. You know, it's just it's just a good it's a good spell overall in elf. All right, so there's two two priests. Uh, sorry, two enemies. This is a deep elf high priest. You usually don't really see these guys. They can hellfire you, they can smite you, and they can double smite you with malign offering. Um, not an incredibly threatening enemy by itself, but can definitely be annoying in packs. Gonna pull upstairs, rest the full, reset the fight. Per the usual. And notice how um, on this, like in this in this little choke point here that I've made with the staircase and the, uh, well I've not made, but I've seen with the staircase and the door. I've kind of, I've never really seen more than two enemies on the screen at the same time. This is very important. Uh, managing line of sight is extremely powerful for uh, dealing with elf. It's it's almost like critical, I would say. You need to be able to manage line of sight. You need to understand how to avoid having enemies come at you more than one at a time. So here's an example of enemies coming at me more than one at a time. I'm gonna back off immediately. Rest to full. There's a deep elf archer. Honestly, it's quite annoying that all these tiles are so weird looking nowadays. Um, they used to look a lot better, but these elves, these deep elf mages look quite silly, in my opinion. Like, they look a lot weirder than they should. They used to look fine. They look, used to look like actual mages. Now they look like rogues or something. They have pants. It's it's odd. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like these tiles are a step down from what they used to be. And that's been pretty... Ref uh, that's been reflected, like... By quite a lot of people actually that I've been talking to about it. Everyone's like, what the hell's wrong with these tiles? They look so weird. Especially like these these Deep Elf Annihilators, for example, they look oddly large footed for some reason. Like their, their boots are really large. It's just weird. I don't I don't know. But yeah, the, it does make them easier to differentiate between, I suppose. Um, but they were always pretty easy to differentiate. If an enemy was purple or really weirdly brightly colorful, they were dangerous. That's pretty much how you saw it. <gasps> oh, two potions of mutation. Oh man, that I could not have asked for more. Nice. Wait, where'd they go? What? Why didn't I pick them up? Oh, I can't carry that many more items. Oh, I have some stuff in my inventory. Hey, nice. Let's just go ahead and quickly... Ooh. 
No, that's bad. Okay, that ring has in plus 10, but unfortunately it has so many negatives, it's just not worth it at all. I'm gonna pick these potions of mutation up, go up, up here. Uh, we'll ID some of these amulets, though there's no chance that we ever use it over the uh, amulet of the four winds. <clears throat> I guess we can enchant the swamp dragon scales to get a little bit more AC. And let's quaff the mutation potions. Okay, so we got a poorly, sh poorly shaped body, and we got um, potion. We got one, rid of one of the potion uh, less effective things. I, I, I just want to go one more. Let's just do one more. Okay, we got robust, and we got rid of the low spell power. So that's really good. Um, we've actually got a really good mutation set now. Robust is going to give us a ton more health. So we had 165 earlier. Um, maybe a little bit higher than that because of fighting training. But now we have 182, which is pretty nice. So we were quite lucky uh, today to get as good a mutation set as we did. Okay, come on now. Let's... Okay. So the thing that, the thing that annoys me is the fact that this ghostly uh, Deep Elf Death Mage looks exactly the same as a regular Deep Elf Death Mage. But it can't be revived by... Uh, by the lost soul, nor can it be affected by poison anymore. So it's just, uh, it's kind of annoying, I don't know. I feel like they should have a secondary tile for it, like this is where the actual guy died. And then his ghost, like, came on and fought me for some reason. Alright, so there's a couple of things here, um, nothing that's really useful. The hat and the gloves, there's pretty much no chance that we'll ever use, uh, anything like, there will be no no possible glove or hat outcomes that will be better than what we have right now. Plus two helmet of intelligence. Hats and helmets, given the same brand, helmets are 100% more effective. If only because helmets give one more AC. The only benefit that hats could have over helmets is the fact that you can have horns one and still use hats. Whereas helmets, you can't. Um, but, like, we have no horns, so helmets is better. helmet is better in every regard. Gloves, uh, there's only archery... It's only archery, strength, and dex, and dex is the best one for this character anyway, so it doesn't matter. It could be, it could be that strength is better, but it, it's not even worth the time to talk about. I don't know. Um, okay, so Sublimation of Blood is a very interesting spell. I'm actually going to pick it up right now. Um, so what this does is you can cast it. So let's say I cast a spell uh, a couple of times. Oh no, I'm low on mana. You can cast Sublimation of Blood to sacrifice some mana for some health. Now the thing is, at higher spell powers, uh, this spell can just straight up do like 35% of your health and re restore all your mana. Uh, that's a very risky strategy obviously, but in a lot of cases it's very good. So I would not be... I would pick it up and use it sometimes. That's that's how I would see it. Uh, and me having it at low spell power is fine. I don't mind it being at low spell power. It makes it slightly more consistent. Um, it's not a huge deal. This book uh, of summoning is also really good. Aura of Abjuration and Mana Viper are great spells. Uh, in fact, it's so good that I'm going to start training summoning magic right now uh, in the hopes that potentially if I need to... Oops. Uh, let's see. Where... I don't know where I normally put Aura of Abjuration. I will put it on K. Like, the thing is, um, Aura of Abjuration will help us just, like, avoid dealing with Ancient Liches and stuff, and Pan Lords on the Orb Run, if we can get enough EXP for it, which is unlikely, but I'll, I'll pick it up in case, anyway. Uh, Mana Viper is obviously a great spell, I've talked about it many times before, but um, if you're a mage, you can definitely pick, uh, you can definitely pick up the Mana Vipers on, uh, if you're there, it's, it's, it's such a good spell, uh, Okay, for some reason the game decided to go up the wrong way. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and X this area out with uh, multiple presses of E. <coughs> and we're going to have to do a run all the way down to depths uh, Zod 5. Small advantage of doing this kind of uh, thing is you can kind of remember what your old ra uh, route was. Pretty helpful. Alright, there's the Orb of Fire downstairs. I'm gonna go down upstairs, heal my mana up, and then I'll engage again. Okay, we got very unlucky with the orbs, and we got wasting away. That's not too bad, though. It's very fine. Completely acceptable. Okay, I'm gonna be very careful again. Just back off if I need to. Avoid taking too much damage from anything. And this is kind of the power of Zot 4 being completely cleared. You just kind of can pull upstairs. You don't have to worry about dealing with, uh, 
you know, any potential enemies randomly hitting you from uh, Zot 4. Like, they, like you popping up to a floor and then there just being random enemies walking by and adding to the fight is the worst thing ever. So I would always clear Zot 4, if possible. Okay, I know there's an Orb of Destruction, uh, Orb of Fire over there to the right. That really sucks for me. And then I missed two Orbs of Fire. Mm, okay, we're going to have to haste here. Uh, I'm also going to Fog. So what this fog will do is it'll potentially prevent me from getting absolutely murdered. I'm still going to get murdered, but um, it prevents me from getting super mutated, like I just fucking got mutated. Damn. <sighs> Alright, that sucks, but we're just going to have to clear it now. Like, I, I, someone asked me before, can I go into uh, Crypt if I am low on, like, stuff? Absolutely, but the game can still be won without going into there, so there's no real point. Uh, it, but I would say that it's completely more than viable, so do it if you feel like you need to, but I don't know. I've, ha I've played like hundreds of games. I've never had to go into Crypt. I've never been so desperate with a character that I'd go into Crypt. Um, but that's simply, you know, the way I see it. I don't want to extend my game any longer. It prevents. It just adds to the risk slightly, and it's just annoying, just generally. So my Orb of Destruction strategy here is not working as great as I hoped it would. But it is working. Again, Orbit Destruction isn't uh, valued because of the fact that it's overpowered or anything. It's val uh, Even though it kind of is. It's valued mostly because of the fact that it can always get the job done no matter what. We've been horribly, horribly mutated with Teleportitis. Meaning that <clears throat> we should now clear this entire floor. Uh, we don't have a choice anymore. <clears throat> Teleportitis is so dangerous that it could potentially get us killed on the Orb Run. Meaning we need to run. Uh, and we need to avoid, uh, sorry, we, we need to prevent Zot5 from killing us on the way up. I'm, I'm getting me, is this like, is there a camera somewhere around? What's going on? Is this being recorded? Yes. Like, we're actually getting trolled right now by the game. It's just very unfortunate, but that, that's what's happening apparently. Just, it's deciding to, uh, just give us a ton of orbs of fire. So what you saw there was me hasting up and then walking back away from the orb of fire. The orb of fire is still, I think, as fast as us. I'm not sure, though. Um, but the reason why we got so much ground off it is because it kept standing still to shoot at me. All right, so we're going to go start doing some degenerate tactics now because I'm really pissed off at getting backspawned. What we're going to do is we're going to go shift X, exit this area off, and we're going to go and explore this outside area a couple hundred times until nothing else spawns. Uh, or until the entire orb chamber is depleted and we just walk straight through it. Yep, this is exactly what I mean by we do n we never ever in the history of mankind want this teleportation mutation because it's just so bad. It's just... It's... <sighs> look, we've... Look, honestly, in this case, we've done all we can. We legitimately have done all we can. Like, we've, we've done absolutely everything in our power to, to get rid of this mutation to, to fight stuff it's just complete bad luck that we fought how many have we fought now at this point i i'm trying to figure out how how do we find it wow i have forgotten the number i've there's supposed to be a oh shift five. no no what the hell shift three there we go how many have we killed how many have we killed please tell me tell me sir how many how many oh, for, uh fucking orbs of fire have we killed like I, I'm actually salty now. I wanna, I wanna see. Uh, where is it? Uh, I'm never gonna know. I'm never gonna know at all. Unless maybe I can go like Control F. What have I? What have I like? No, it doesn't work. Damn it! All right. Like we have gotten so many orbs of fire. It's absolutely ridiculous. That's too many. I can't. Am I? Am I looking at the right area? Nine orbs of fire. That's a lot. Like, the highest I've ever seen in an orb run is 12. Uh, sorry, in, in, in orb slot 5 is 12. And that was an absurd game. That was actually ridiculous. So, you know. 9 is getting there. We're very high up. As far as things should go. Okay. So, if you have teleportitis, I think what we I would suggest is uh, sticking very close to the upstairs whenever possible. And what that means is just, when you go to rest, don't just sit there and rest. Rather, just... Go to the upstairs and rest. It's probably safer. I think that's what I'll do from now on, um, for the time being. I'm just gonna stand here, let the guys die and fire a little bit, walk back, heal up. Um, also, try to avoid 
extended periods of combat because of course the teleportate uh teleport titus could just randomly strike and then you're screwed i'm gonna pull upstairs heal go down pull upstairs heal exactly the same strategy like, we we got absolutely butt blasted with mutations this time around it's very unfortunate i don't think this is a normal this is actually a very unusual game in that we've gotten so many orbs of fire just just an absurd number of orbs of fire Okay, normally when you rest on the upstairs, this is still muscle memory for me, but um, if I have Teleport Titus, I would actually go upstairs, straight up. Also, we got our spells that are a little easier to cast back again. Thanks. Appreciate it. We got quite literally every bad mutation except Berserk Titus, and that's the only one that doesn't matter this time around. It's kind of funny. It's not that funny, though. And somehow we still got backspawned by the Orb Guardian. I'm going to go all the way back up, and then rest again. See, at this point in time, I'm actually just straight up spiting the game. I'm just playing completely obtusely out of spite, just as a sign of hatred towards this Zot 5 that we've been landed in. It's just so unfortunate. Yes, let's ice cloud these guys. Sure. There's another one. Um, um, we don't have enough mana to take care of these guys. Uh, I don't want to haste. I don't want to ambrosia around a orb guardian, uh, orb of fire. I think I'm just gonna haste. Ask, but whatever. We'll just haste. We got. Oh, and I miss misinputted. Oh wow! Thanks. Thank you, orb of fire. You you got rid of our bad mute. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna have to restart this fight with uh, the second orb of fire over here. This is that tenth orb of fire, mind you. Ten. That's a lot of orbs of fire. Did we kill it? No, we did not. Excellent. And we also lost uh, robustness, so that's good. Okay, we're just gonna have to melee orb of destruction that guy. He was uh, quite unfortunately in our way. <sighs> Man, this is fun. I got strength minus four as well, meaning our evade and our strength have, our AC have completely gone to shit. Okay, let's go on our friends. Let's go into our uh, into our secret stash here. Let's just go. You should legitimately be able to acquire mutation potions. I think, like, you should just be able to acquire them. I think that'd be just swell, because this is just frustrating, and I would I would happily pay a mutation. How did I even get in here? Oh, it's teleportitis. This is gonna happen a couple of times in our old run, by the way. We're just screwed uh, if that happens. Like, we actually can't do anything. Like, the only thing you can say about that is just unlucky. Like, we just are unlucky right now. Sometimes that's how the game works, though. You just unlocks, and then you you get in these situations, and you're like, what? how could I have prevented this? And the answer is, play around it, idiot. Moron. What do you think this is? Some kind of game? Sure, let's pick up this potion of experience. We don't really need it, but we're just going to do it. We'll put it into stealth. Uh, and that's a that's a very interesting thing that I think uh, people wouldn't consider, but I'm putting it into stealth mostly because in the orb run we might actually have to just go straight stealth. I'm actually going to put 100% of my EXP into stealth. Um, why I'm doing this is because we might be able to run away from something that might kill us. That's literally the only reason. Uh, when we get teleported and screwed, I want to get that extra turn. I'm paying in blood basically for. We got crystal spear. I'm gonna uh, fear scroll. I'm gonna invisibility. And what the invisibility is gonna do is gonna it's gonna prevent the draconians from seeing me. I'm still getting poison arrowed. I'm still getting messed up. But I'm just gonna run for it. That was tel teleportitis again. What a great mutation. I love the mutation system in this game. Got double plus fucked for it. Um, yeah, and teleported again. Is this mutation system one or is this is this like six? Oh, this teleportitis two. Okay, fair enough. I was gonna say like, is, if, if this is teleportitis one, I can't imagine what teleportitis three is. You just don't get a move. Yep, look at that. Straight back into the into the fray. Should definitely be resting on the upstairs, uh, going downstairs rather than doing whatever the hell I'm doing. Cause this is just annoying. All right, got our final level left. Let's put into strength, cause otherwise we're gonna die of stat loss. Well, you can't die, but we're gonna be, get absolutely boned in the orb run. Um, thanks to stat deterioration 
2 and strength minus 4, uh, our 7 strength is now 3. And it has a good potential to just go straight to negative 1. So, fuck us, right? Lol. Trying not to be angry in the tutorial, but this is just, like, we're getting boned for no reason. We didn't deserve this. This character didn't deserve this. All this work that we put in just uh, means nothing now. Alright, let's orb run. Let's just pray that we don't get absolutely destroyed. Like, let's just not even engage in these... There's an invisible thing to the north. Of course, of course there is. And you know what? It's also... It's also an, uh, a moth that... A uh, ghost moth. So that's excellent. Alright. Uh, I think we just get destroyed here. Okay, that's good. I'm just going to cure out a couple of times just to heal. Alright, this is going to be just a really bumpy ride. Fuck it. I'm, I'm just so, like, not invested in this run anymore. Like, just end it. Just end it, please. I know this is a tutorial run. I'm sorry. Like, uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm just going to play like I normally do. Fuck. This is so... Oh, man. So, okay, okay, fine. We'll take a pause. We'll talk about the old run. Old run should not be this ridiculous. You guys know how to old run if you've done a melee character. If you haven't done a melee... Uh, if you haven't done a character yet, and this is your first run... The old run is basically as such. Run away from everything. If you can't run away from it, kill it as fast as possible or teleport away. Every time you see a pan lord, haste away or teleport away or go upstairs as quick as you can. Try to dig your way to the nearest upstairs and don't try to engage enemies. It's a, it's not a, enemies are just going to keep spawning. You just need to run for it. Enemies such as brimstone fiends, uh, tits and middles, uh, tormentors. Like generally, you should run away from them. Tormentors, you can probably kill. It's probably faster and more safe. Uh, Hell Sentinels will screw you over. If you're like me and you had six or seven haste potions and then suddenly they just disappeared because you got screwed. Unlucky, just next game. FF20. Or FF15 nowadays. So I'm just going to be a bit careful. That's an enemy, for example, I just wouldn't bother with. I have poison resist. I'll just run away from him. going to try to run our way through depths. Rest on the upstairs if you can. If you have teleportitis, cry because if you get screwed, you just you just can't do anything. It's unlucky. Just if we get teleported, we get teleported. Like I'm just gonna have to just leg it as fast as I can. Okay, that is a tormentor. They are purple now for some reason. It's weird, but you know whatever. Uh, let's just keep going. Excellent. D8, D7. You can press. Uh, shift G and shift D and then zero to automate this process. I'm being very careful and specific. I want to avoid as many turns as I can. Okay, teleportitis, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, dungeon level two. Wow, we are very lucky. I'm not gonna. I'm okay. We did not see a single pan lord on that old run. That was so damn lucky. We got so lucky with that run. Because we have no haste. We literally could have just died to a single pan lord because they have haste and we don't. Like, that's how bad it was. But we made it. It's done. That was terrible. I'm never doing that again. Holy crap. Why? Why did that happen to me? Orbs of Destruction definitely should work much better than it did. Uh, so don't... Don't, um... Take that as your regular Zot 5 for a mage. Mages should crush Zot 5 with Orb of Destruction. It should just be like super straightforward, kill them in two hits, easy peasy, easy peasy, every single time. But unfortunately for us, somehow our orbs missed. We got doubles, uh, double orbs of fire everywhere. It was terrible. Okay, that being said, this tutorial has been a long ass project, and it's one of the ones that I probably won't be repeating for a while because holy shit, tutorials are hard to make. Um, in terms of like time i have been completely discouraged from doing this tutorial because of how much stuff i have to put into them um and you can see by the end of the series when i kind of forget what i was doing in the beginning because i had a i got really sick in the middle i just ugh. and also i had the tournament sorry yeah those two things happened at the same time roughly um yeah it just it just sucked so <sighs> it's kind of un unlucky um that the tutorial took that long. Apologize for it. I think it took like almost two months to make. It's ridiculous. Uh, but we will probably be returning to regular broadcasting schedules. Um, maybe doing a couple of more interesting things. I don't really know what the next big project is. We've done Greater Player twice now. 
Uh, we're doing Greater Player... Oh, sorry, we've done Greater Player three times, I think, haven't we? No, we've done, done it two times on the channel um, already. So we've done everything twice. Like, there's really nothing left to do. I don't know. Uh, there's really... Like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not sure what the hell we do now. Like, the game's done. You know what I mean? There's only so many runs you can do. And I'm not going to be like uh, that Lebo uh, I think his name is like Lebos Jr. Or something. He does the Dark Souls run. He Like, every single day he streams Dark Souls... And he just does more and more ridiculous runs until eventually it's just like no hit, no roll, uh, no 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 weapon, fist only, dung pie only, uh, run with a fight stick. It's like, what the fuck? Like obviously there's not enough buttons on my fight stick to play dungeon crawl stone suit, but I could definitely have a go at it. But nah, it's probably not worth it. My input lenience, my inputs aren't clean enough to move. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you really feel like it was helpful to you let me know it might you know encourage me to do another one or something similar for a different character at some point uh tell your friends so that uh, they can learn how to play a mage because this shit is really in depth uh consult the google doc use the google doc as a resource i've actually been updating it i know that i haven't really been mentioning it but i've been writing in it every couple of uh, every episode or so i'll update it and I'll write more and more, and I'll add more and more to the earlier parts, so it gets more and more large. I think right now it's at 11 pages worth of work. Not a lot for someone like me who does law and has to make this many notes, but for something that's not study, that's pretty good, I would say. Um, it's pretty in-depth at this point. I've been kind of flushing out the earlier parts, because I know that in the beginning we kind of wrote it on the side uh, of the run, but after a while I was just like, ah, it's taking too long, I'm just going to go ahead and you know, uh, do it in my own time. So I've been, I've been filling that out. The Google Doc will be in the description. It's a really good document. I hope you guys use it. Hope you guys find it useful. Yeah, any thoughts, any commentary on, on the run itself, anything that you guys think about how I could do this better, etc. blah, 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 blah. Like, let me know. I do need to know these things. Otherwise, I'm never going to be able to improve myself, never going to improve the channel. It's just going to stay the same. And that's really annoying to me because, like, obviously, it's not doing... Uh, it's we haven't really moved anywhere in the last couple of months just because I've been so damn like frustrated with how these uh, tutorials and just the tournament and all that stuff like all these bad things have happened and I just haven't really been able to kind of put the, to the channel first but that's also because you know crawl's not my main game right now like I've always like okay very small side talk I've always had this problem where I have never once had a main game other than crawl uh and what I mean by that is I've never had a game that I just focus on completely. Crawl was the only one that I've ever done. Um, <clears throat> every other time, it's always been three to four main games, playing them all concurrently, getting to about gold, platinum rank in ranked games. Um, <clears throat> like, I'm always good or decent, but I'm never, like, very good, right? So, League, I'm always plat, plat one, ish is where i sit plat three plat one is now where i sit this year this whole year uh like hearthstone i get to rank five every time uh street fighter i have like a win rate about 57 percent, which is like eh, it's not bad um like i'm just good enough that i can say that i'm i'm pretty good and that people will be like meh but the reality is i want to really get good at something right so i've been Focusing, I like last in in the first like hiatus where we were uh, where I stopped posting for about a month. What I was actually doing was I was playing ranked every day. I played about seven games a day, uh, every every single day for like the entire time that I wasn't posting because uh, the season was about to end and I had to get. I was trying to get to diamond, couldn't get there. I was like, fine, that's fine. I'll come back to the channel. Um, but you you could see that the 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 mindset of grinding was already still in my head because in those videos i really like i was like damn i really wish i was playing league right now but the season was over so i couldn't do anything then i wanted to play hearthstone do that for a month but i couldn't do it because i don't know hearthstone is just not a game that i can play for very long i can play it on my phone for like hours but i can't play it on the computer at all it's frustrating uh now i'm into street fighter right now but i'm also playing a bit of league so it's like ah oh, man i mean i'm loving street fighter but it's not a game that you can play for like six hours a day oh at least not me I love it. I, like, absolutely love it. I, I do play six hours a day, possibly, or at least three hours a day. and that's But that's broken up into, like, four or five different sessions where I play ranked, casual, training mode, blah, blah, blah. Just doing all these working, uh, just working out all the stuff. But, like, I really need to get one game as my main one. And I'm trying to, f 
figure out how to do that without sacrificing everything else, and I don't think there is really a way. I suppose there is, like, a bit of a cross-training thing between this, uh, what I, what problem I'm suffering from, and the, ta uh, and the tutorial. I suppose that a parallel could be drawn between players who believe that the game, the, the Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup is a game that like, doesn't matter, and that only, you know, the fun can be extracted from it by winning, just, uh, by not even winning, but, like, by playing Garbo combos. It's not really the case. The reality is the most fun that you're ever going to get is winning a lot of games. Uh, especially when you win more weird combos uh, rather than just dying in D6. But, like, this is mostly just a personal rant. I apologize for those of you that don't care, 99% of you that don't care, including the entire population of Crawl, probably didn't care, so they already closed the video. So I'm just talking to myself, but, you know, I've gotten used to that. That's kind of what I've been doing for, like, the last year and a half. But, you know, um, yeah, th this tutorial went well, I think, in the early parts uh, definitely had the drive to do it every single day, but once Crawl, uh, sorry, once the tournament came along, I got distracted, obviously. League of Legends kind of getting in the way, Street Fighter's kind of getting in the way, but I'm trying to get back. It, we'll have to see. Like, once Uni comes back, I'll, I'll be able to figure out if the channel can become daily again, or if I should do it every second day, or something. Like, I just, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff on my plate, but I'm always, like, it's not that it's an incredible amount it's just that like it's all stuff that i've chosen to do myself so it's all stuff that i'm lazy to do it's kind of like that anyway i've been rambling for a good couple of minutes now um thanks for watching guys really appreciate those of you that stuck with me for like a while um i hope this i hope this tutorial would would do well but um yeah it's not Look, it's not done great, but it's a 15-part series. People will eventually pick it up, hopefully. And I'll people will eventually watch it, I guess. Like, that's the dream, right? Um, yeah, I can't really guarantee that. Ah, uh, well, whatever. It's all good. I'm going to go play some Street Fighter. Thanks for watching. See you all later.